I'm patient. Why should I feel like multiple prototypes is an advantage to me and you're not just fumbling around through the dark? Right. And from a patient view, it may seem like that. I don't blame sometimes. them. Right. Which is why I bring it up. Exactly. It's an interesting topic. You doing the surgery and you, you know, usually taking the initial bite puts us in already such a good situation from the get go. And so from there, we're really just fine tuning everything. So there's like a thousand things that go on behind the scenes. Once the patient leaves, we're sending all of that information to our lab, which that in and of itself is a huge discussion. You know, communicating clearly with the lab, which our lab is amazing. They're trying to duplicate what we see, you know, in the office. So relaying that and having them, you know, translate that and bringing it to life is amazing. But a thousand different things that go on once the patient leaves the office. And so it's more of an art and less of a science sometimes. Everyone's anatomy is different. Everyone's jaw, you know, positioning is different. How they function and how their jaw moves. Um, it's speech also, dialing in the speech. Again, sometimes the you know exact ratio that the book says doesn't really work. So it's like, all right, now what do we do? Now we have to veer off and try something else until we get it right. So there is a big part of, it's not trial and error, but it's being willing to try something else, uh, you know, something else that you really didn't think of, seeing if that works, because it usually does.